Hey, Jazzy. Hi, Uncle Ebony. I was just wondering, will I grow up to be a big, strong, Texas Jumbo Forever guitar pick just like you? It doesn't matter how big you are, son. It matters what you're made of. If you don't agree that Forever Pick is the most awesome tone-producing, mind-twisting tool you've ever strummed across your strings, Luthier Robert S. Paul stands behind it. You get a full refund. <coughs> Click below and save now. Hey, y'all. It's Shed Post Friday. Oh, hi, Daddy. Hi, sweetheart. Oh, Hey, what's up, Phillies and fellers? Brad Guitar is here. It is time again for Super Friday. Man, if you ever want to see your life just fly by, start a weekly program and just see how fast the weeks go by. Man, it seems like yesterday I did the last shit post Friday, and here we are back again already. Well, first up in the news, we've got some sad news this week. The great entrepreneur of guitar, uh, Jim Dunlop, has passed away, according to this website, ultimateclassicrock.com. It looks like they might have been the first to this news and they say it hasn't been officially reported yet but their um, their contact has confirmed the news anyone who's picked up or played a guitar in the past 50 years has surely heard of uh, Jim Dunlop uh, he started out uh, he immigrated to the US from Canada I think and it's a really interesting story from what I uh, read in here about his immigration he actually uh, at the time was supposed to have sixteen hundred dollars in his bank account in order to come across the border into the united states and what he, he only had six hundred dollars in his bank account so what he did was he went to a credit union borrowed a thousand dollars put it in his account and then went and got his certification stamped and then went and paid the money right back <laughs> which i thought was just really funny and cool but yeah this is uh you know pretty sad but he he lived a very ful fulfilling life uh, doing uh, things with guitar, guitar-related accessories. You guys will undoubtedly have used Jim Dunlop uh, lock picks. You probably have played uh, Crybaby uh, wah pedals, which uh, were manufactured by Jim, Jim Dunlop. Uh, all kinds of things, st straps, uh, you name it. Anything accessory-wise having to do with the electric or acoustic guitar, uh, Jim Dunlop had his fingers in it, and it's a really sad loss, and our condolences to his family. Next up in the news, really important news actually, uh, according to GuitarWorld.com and also a couple of other websites, including MIA.org.uk, the Music Industry International Coalition, uh, they met at the NAM show. Basically what they're doing is they're going to try to lobby for CITES uh, whenever they meet again in May of 2019 of this year. Uh, to try to exempt uh, guitars and guitar related equipment from the uh, Rosewood ban. When they first did the CITES thing, you know, it was passed and then everybody kind of cheered for a minute and then realized that this was going to negatively affect trade in guitars and it was going to prevent guitar makers from being able to put Rosewood on their guitars and sell them across international boundaries without jumping through so many hoops and having so much documentation that it was no longer going to be economical, on, especially on lower end instruments. So, you know, for a while there, we thought that was pretty much going to be the end, but apparently uh, they, this lobbying effort has already seen some uh, positive results, and uh, pretty much, according to this article that I'm reading here, they are going to probably be able to get this amendment through. It is going to exempt finished musical instruments containing rosewood, it's going to exempt finished musical instrument parts containing rosewood, and it's going to exempt finished musical accessories containing rosewood. So that's going to go a long way uh, toward putting us back to the status quo uh, before CITES came into effect in uh, 2017. So th this would be a huge, huge plus. This is something that a lot of us have been calling for for a long time. I think I was one of the first to report on the CITES treaty back in I believe the end of 2016 whenever uh, it was about to go into effect I uh, reported it here on this channel and actually my criticisms of it were kind of met with a lot of hate at the time because I don't think people really understood how this was negatively going to affect the guitar industry and uh, it didn't take long though before they started to realize and uh, uh, the negative effects were were several actually you saw Gibson move from 
uh, using rosewood on some of their models to use in more of a, a man-made material, especially on lower end instruments. Um, they used ebony on higher end stuff anyway, but they started using reach light for basically almost everything that they did there for a while. I don't know if, what they're going to do, if they're going to go back to using rosewood or not on some of their like SGs and things like that, but I guess we will see. Uh, Fender had moved to Pau Ferro, which, uh, which is kind of a close look uh, grain-wise to rosewood uh, on their entire Mexican line. So, yeah, there are definitely some changes, and it I, I don't know, it'll be interesting to see whether or not Fender goes back to uh, using rosewood on the Mexican line uh, in 2020 and beyond, because... You know, they've already got their 2019 lineup, and it's they're already using the Pau Ferro stuff on the Mexican instruments. So it'll be interesting to see how they respond to this, whether they go back to using rosewood or whether they just stick to the Pau Ferro on the Mexican stuff and uh, leave the higher end, you know, rosewood, the rarer wood, uh, to exclusively to the American instruments, which kind of makes sense to me, but we'll see what, how they react. It'll also be interesting to see uh, how soon... Uh, Rosewood starts getting back on some of the other imported instruments that we uh, that we have seen it disappear from. So, but definitely good news all around. It's good to to know that uh, you know this stuff wasn't set in stone. And and you know I had figured at the time and I had speculated that well this is pretty much the end of Rosewood because anytime it seems like you get uh, you get a big government um, you know bureaucracy or you get a bill or something passed it's very difficult to to scale that backward it's always more difficult taking away government intrusion than it is imposing it in the first place so it's really good that this this lobbying effort has taken place and uh, I applaud these efforts and hopefully this can really turn things around and make it so that you know rosewood isn't you know it's not treated like ivory or something like that you know because there's still a lot of rosewood in the world it's not as rare as some woods let's just put it that way another interesting bit of news uh they are actually in the process right now of making a david bowie uh, biopic called stardust so i don't know if it's going to be sort of like you know the recent queen bohemian rhapsody movie but um they have tapped this guy johnny flynn to play uh david bowie which is exciting for me because i'm a big johnny flynn fan if you have not heard johnny flynn music uh, you should definitely go and check him out right now. He's got a lot of videos on YouTube, uh, a couple really great albums. His first two or three albums are just fantastic from start to finish, and I highly recommend them. He's just really acoustic-oriented music, really folky. Uh, he, you know, he is uh, he's a, a British folk player, but uh, this dude is really good, and it's uh, really cool that not only is there a David Bowie movie uh, going to be coming out soon, but uh, that Johnny Flynn is going to be playing the lead role in that as David Bowie. So. Can't wait to see that. Also in the news, check this out. This uh, employee of this guitar store, he kind of, he sees these guys in his store and he's, he's kind of sensing that one guy's about to make a mad dash toward the, the exit with this $4,000 guitar. And look what he does. He's just like a boss. He just runs up to this guy, takes the guitar, and then proceeds to try to keep him there. So several other employees come over to help him, and uh, the guy pulls a knife on him and ends up getting it. He was able to get in his car and start to take off, and one of the employees punched out the driver's side window, uh, which actually helped the cops find this car, and uh, they were able to arrest the suspect. And also, it looks like his girlfriend was arrested as well. She was charged with also grand larceny and drug possession. They also recovered the guitar, but it was damaged, so I'm sure there will be some kind of uh, some kind of civil suit involved in this as well. But I'm glad they caught these bastards. Every guitar store in the country should print these photos out, stick them up on your wall, and remember their faces and never let them in your store ever again. I'm sure everyone by now has seen the news about Billy Corgan. He was recently reunited with a stolen guitar uh, that was stolen back in 1992, which was right after the release of their first album, Gish. So he comes off stage in Detroit one night, and five minutes later, uh, one of, or two minutes later, or whatever it was, one of his roadies came up to him and said some guy bolted out the back door with his uh, guitar, and uh, 
so 27 years later, this lady finds the guitar at a yard sale. It's a 1970s uh, American Strat. It's like a 74 or something Strat. And she buys it at a yard sale for like 200 bucks and uh, is able to return it to Billy Corrigan. Pretty, pretty cool story. He had uh, offered a $10,000 no questions asked reward at the time that it was stolen uh, 27 years ago. And he said he spent all this time with uh, still looking for it, um, but that he had been, you know, scammed so many times or people had tried to scam him so many times and, he, uh, you know, people that led him on wild goose chases looking for this thing so many times that he had just given up hope. And then, you know, the, it turns up. So it's pretty, pretty cool, pretty neat for something like that to return to you after uh, such a long time. I, I didn't see where he had paid her anything for it or whatever, but uh, I'm sure he compensated her somehow. But it'll just be interesting to see whether he, uh, he still thinks uh, the same of this guitar, whether it's, you know, whether he still thinks it's his number one after all this time or whether he's grown out of it. You know, uh, recently he uh, gave an interview with Guitar Center where he was talking about his reverend guitars that he uses now, saying that, you know, the paint job on one sounded better than the paint job on one of the others. And uh, if you look at this guitar, I mean, I don't know what he's going to think about this thing because it barely has any paint. And the paint that it does have is all different colors, so uh, who knows what Billy's going to think of this one. But yeah, pretty cool that he got his guitar back. I think one of the more interesting guitar return stories was one of um, the three pickup Les Paul custom guitar that was returned to, uh, to Peter Frampton after, I don't know how many years, maybe 35 or 40 years. He finally got that guitar back after it had been lost in a plane crash. In 1980, the guitar was lost in a plane crash in Venezuela, or so Peter Frampton thought. This yeah. is the guitar on the famous cover of Frampton Comes Alive. This is the guitar that you used to play all these great songs. So, 1980, you are on tour. You're about to, uh, you're in, in South America. The guitar is put on a cargo plane in Venezuela en route to Panama, but it crashes just right after it takes off. You just assumed that it was gone, as, as one would. It was a fiery plane yeah. crash. For 30 years, I believed that because we sent my guitar technician down a week after the crash. Basically, there were a couple of speaker cabinets and uh, a melted uh, Fender Rhodes piano, and that was about it. It turned out the guitar ended up on the island of Curaçao, which is off the Venezuelan coast. Somebody basically picked it up from the wreckage, and uh, it made its way there to a, a local musician. How did somebody else on that island figure out or make the connection that that could have been Peter Frampton's guitar? Apparently, it was played around Caracas, and whoever had it got a little hot for them because <laughs> people knew it was mine. And eventually, a local customs agent on the island named Donald comes across the guitar, recognizes it as the Peter Frampton guitar, right? Yes, because the owner of the guitar had taken it to him because Donald is uh, known on the island for if you want a guitar to be fixed, to take it to Donald. And a year and a half, two years ago, I got an email to my website containing pictures of the guitar. And then one day it just turns up and uh, he gets his guitar back. Just, just a crazy wild story. I think I read that in one of the guitar magazines a, a couple years back, but... Just a crazy, wild, you know, guitar return story, and this one, this one's pretty, pretty up there as well. I mean, after 27 years, for somebody to find this guitar, which is a famous guitar, at a yard sale, and and not only that, but for $200, it's just unheard of. All right, so that'll do it for the news. All right, guys, in this segment, I thought we'd take a look at a couple of amplifiers that I got this week. Uh, this is one of them. This is a Blackface Bandmaster. Um, got this, found it on, uh, found it on Facebook Marketplace of all places. The guy wanted 400 bucks for it. Um, said it had a blown fuse or no fuse. I assume somebody blew the fuse. I assume it's got some problems. Probably, uh, hopefully it's just output tubes or something like that. But we do, um, have no fuse in this thing. So we'll have to figure out at some point what's going on with it. But I thought what we'd do is just kind of give it the preliminary overlook here while we're uh, while we're together this will this will be something that we get into later on um, 
a little more in depth, but I thought right now we would just uh, just kind of check it out. And it's very dusty. Obviously hasn't been used in a long time. This thing has got, let's see, is that 5881s? Yeah, this thing has got 5881s in it. I'm guessing somebody probably stuck 5881s in this thing. Didn't tr didn't try to rebias it. It might have burned up one of these tubes and took a fuse with it. But it's the unfortunately they changed all the tubes. I would rather they just left it alone, but no, they changed them all. I think the guy said this thing had come from Fort Fort Myers, Fort Myers area. I don't even know where that is exactly, but let's see. I'm gonna let's go ahead and open it up. May as well. I've got one other amp to show you guys too, so stick around here. We'll go. We'll check that one out also. This thing's still got the original two prong power cord, so I'm guessing not much has been done to it electronically, other than tube change. Because usually that's the first thing somebody will do, because right? that's one of the easiest things to do is put a three prong power cord on something, and if it if that has not been done, then usually. Usually, nothing else has been done. Okay. Whoop. All right, well. Uh, yep. Now, somebody has been in it before. It's been pouring down rain today here in the Louisville area. Kind of an interesting, uh, kind of an interesting month weather-wise. We had a uh, a day today that featured uh, that's gonna or well hadn't quite featured snow yet, but it's supposed to feature snow. Uh, but also we had the uh, record temperature today. Or near record. It was a near record temperature high, and uh, and then we get snow on the same day. And this within a week after uh, we had temperatures, what was it like, 20 below zero, something like that, for one of those days last week. Just crazy, crazy cold. But uh, yeah, this thing looks fairly unmolested for the most part. Uh, we've got all of the original. Uh, blue molded capacitors here. Um, these are original as well. Those will be among the first things to go. Pretty much what you'd expect to see in a blackface era amplifier. Um, there's our bias pot. We do have a, a new bias capacitor here, and this thing does not look like it was tacked on very well. Look at this. See the soldering job that was done right there? It looks like the it looks like it barely goes into that blob and then just kind of stops right there. So I'll have to check that for sure. Check and see if that capacitor is even good. Uh, looks like maybe we have a new diode. Don't know. That diode looks like it might be a little bit crusty. It's original though, I think. Uh, that will, of course, need to be changed. Somebody did get in here and change these uh, screen resistors but we'll want to double check those we still have the death cap in place again we still have the two prong power cord so yeah this will be one that can be serviced i'm sure and hopefully brought back to life the thing i'm going to be skeptical of for sure are the tubes uh, power tubes mainly and also we'll be skeptical of this power transformer because uh, we know that something blew a fuse at some point and uh we don't really know what that is, so we'll have to we'll have to figure that part out. This model should have a solid state rectifier, and it does. And it looks like half of the rectifier has been changed too. And it looks like it wasn't done very well. I don't know if you're gonna be able to see it or not. You can't see it. Yeah, there you go. Yeah, you can see half of the solid state rectifier has been changed. That's odd. Yeah, a lot of that just looks pretty messy. You see there's bits of solder everywhere. and Look at that one. That one's barely even on there. 
So, yeah, I probably will do that, that whole thing over again. But yeah, cool. You know, for 400 bucks, I mean, it's kind of hard to shake a stick at that. And this is definitely something I, as long as the transformers are okay, it'll be a good deal. But if it turns out that, you know, one of the transformers is blown, then I'll pretty much uh, probably just break even on this or struggle to. So anyway, there's that one. I've got another one too to show you. Check this out. All right, so here's the other amplifier I got this week. Uh, the other day, an old friend contacted me via Facebook, and he sent me a link to this other fellow who was selling this thing for 125 bucks. And I uh, couldn't have, couldn't have jumped on the ad any quicker when I saw it. Uh, this is a I don't know what year exactly this is. I think it's early 60s. Uh, Dan Electro made Silver Tone. I forget the model number right hand offhand here. But uh, decent shape, not the greatest though. It, it does have some some issues. I think it sat in a basement for a while and maybe got damp on the bottom. And I'll show you the inside here in just a minute on that. Uh, gonna need a new handle on it. He was, you know, again asking 125 bucks for it. I contacted him. I said, hey, you know, I'm, uh, I'd really be interested in that, and I told him who I was and stuff because I already knew him again through this other friend of mine. He knew the guy as well, and. Uh, I, I've known, I've known of the bands that he's played in in the past too. So, um, but he said, you know, I was kind of second or third in lines. A couple other people had already contacted him about it, and I said, you know, because again, he was only asking 125 bucks. So I was like, look, just contact the other guys, tell them it's sold, and I'll give you 200 bucks. So he was like, deal. <laughs> so I ended up with it, and that's sometimes that's just what you got to do to be uh, be the winner on these things. I wish I, I only wish I'd had that kind of winning attitude the other day when I saw that, that Victor in Goodwill, that radio. But uh, yeah, you win some, you lose some. But on this, this should be a fun one to redo uh, because it is going to require some uh, restoration work, and uh, all of all of that work should be fun to document. But you can see here uh, where we've got a crack. And the bottom is kind of warped, so I'm going to definitely have to do something about this bottom of this cabinet. And I'm not 100% sure what I'm going to do. I think I'm going to have to probably remove the chassis uh, from this. You know, I mean, at the end of the day, also, I might just leave it as is because it's, you know, it is what it is. It's an old lamp. But um, if I did want to fix this and try to straighten this out and make it right, uh, I think we might have to remove the chassis from this thing and uh, see about see about maybe dampening it somehow, like getting it really humid so that we can put some weight on it and sort of compress it back flat. And uh, then what I would have to do, because it's so filthy and stuff inside, it's all chipboard material and it's so filthy and it's, again, it's got water damage and probably mold and God knows what else. But, you know, I'll have to do something to kind of coat it in something. But first I'm going to have to get some kind of substance, some kind of, some kind of hardener that I can basically soak into this wood and let it, and it harden and protect it. I'm going to have to figure out what to do but, and what to treat it with. But I'm going to have to try to, you know, again get it flattened out and then treat it and then hopefully that you know it'll be good to go i could put new feet on it put a new handle on it uh, do the cosmetic stuff but also you know do the electronic stuff the electronic stuff should be the fun fun part that's the part we are comfortable with doing when you get into cabinetry and stuff like that that's where you know i've i've always got a lot to learn um but you know we've got these areas also where we're we're kind of peeling up on the corners so we can glue a lot of this stuff back down and make it look pretty good. This thing should sound really great. I mean this should be an awesome sound and ample by the time we're done with it. It's got a roll of speaker in it, 926. So this should be 1959. 26th week of 1959. We've got a tube chart in here, 12x7, a, a couple 6v6s, 12AU6. 6x5. Uh, this does have tremolo. We've got a yeah microphone channel and an instrument channel, so it's, it's very much like the 1482 in uh, in setup. But you know, obviously, it's it's broken off into two chassis. But yeah, again, you know, this should be a fun one, and for 200 bucks, I mean, it's kind of hard to shake a stick at that. Um, it's definitely going to make a fantastic studio amplifier by the time I'm done with it. 
Uh, you, you know, the thing is, you never know about the uh, integrity of speakers and something this old, especially if they haven't been, you know, stored in an ideal environment. We have no idea what the uh, what the electronics are going to be like. It would be interesting to plug it in right now and fire it up. I'm I'm actually half tempted to see if it, if it fires up on the Variac. Yeah, hell with it. Let's try to fire it up on the Variac. The only reason I'm doing this is just out of cu sheer curiosity. Okay, so let's see what a 1959 Dan Electro Silver Tone amplifier does. This is the 1432, by the way. That's the model of this. Let's see what it does when we fire it up on the Variac for the first time in God knows how long. Probably 30 years, anyway. He said it's been setting probably for the last 25 years. Untouched. And, no, I don't usually recommend you do this with your amplifiers. You don't just plug them in and turn them on and see what happens but in this case we're going for the entertainment value here so far nothing I think I probably turned it off this bottom is in such bad condition there's a spacer there's a wooden spacer over here that's almost completely disintegrated. This one over here is not that good either. All right, I'm getting nothing. Nothing at all. Okay, so let's see what's up. Oh, that would be why. We have a blown fuse. Blown fuse. So that could mean any number of things as well. We could have a bad rectifier. We could have bad power transformer could be a bad output tube or tubes could be bad output transformer could be a bad any number of things so we've got the same problem with this pretty much as we have with that black face so yeah these should be a, a fun couple of uh restoration amplifiers down the road we'll get into these but right, guys, yeah that'll do it for ship post friday hope you've enjoyed this one if you have please hit subscribe down below also hit the bell to receive all notifications there have been a lot of people i'm sure who have not been getting notifications on my stuff lately for obvious reasons and uh, if you hit that bell it just ensures that you get all of my notifications so anyway that's it see y'all later Hi. Oh, hi, Daddy. Hi, Bocephus. I'm a Bocephus. Here, look. Watch. Ready? Pooch, 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 pooch. <laughs>